as the title says, we are going to go through examples um, of headstock bearing removal. Now, a very quick side note that I want to talk about is that I frequently on this channel talk about gloves. These things. Tell you what, let's go and do something with... Ugh, with a piece of metal and another piece of metal and some more metal with gloves like this oh no they're now completely useless gloves the appropriate gloves for the appropriate thing now if you look at this glove right it has had a bit of battle damage but my palms are what matter right that's what i'm bothered about i'm bothered about but this is not really a problem but cutting yourself um you know like little slithers of steel right you get a little little rag a little bit of swarf a little slither you don't see it you grab a, uh, yeah yeah and you know the palms of your hands are what it's all about any road now i've had that lecture <laughs> let's get to head stop bearings So this is a Kawasaki, uh, no, it's not a Kawasaki at all, it's a, <laughs> it's a R6 headstock um, that I actually have as an excess, believe it or not, so um, it doesn't matter what we do to this, I would like to keep it in good nick because if I ever don't need it anymore kind of thing, I need it for a mock-up, if I don't need it I can then sell it on because it is in excellent condition. End stops here, for some reason there's three washers on that end. The end stops are still intact, so these haven't been broken off. All the bolts are present, these are all stock. It needs a sandblast. The steering stem is spot on. The, the, the threads are spot on. And this could be your bike, right? So, we've seen what buffoons do with this kind of thing. Just driving the wedge down until the whole thing just drops off its mouth. So what we're going to do is we are going to remove this uh, stock here and what we need is we need the nut. So you've got this nice, I've got this nice part and I don't want to wreck this nice part because I'm not going to use it, I might use the steering stem. I'm not going to use it, but let's just say this is your steering stem and you're changing your bearings, right? You don't want to damage this because that would be stupid. Here it is. Now, taking off this, this little inner cup isn't always a very nice experience. It's always a bit hammer, chisel, bang, crunch, as you saw, chiseling it off there. And you get little marks on this and that. So one of the things I want to point out with this specific method is that this is an aluminium steering stem. Um, so basically it's a steering stem that isn't, it's not a, it's a, it's a fit, it's almost an interference fit. There's actually a lock ring um, up at one end to stop it uh, basically fall, but it's actually so it can clamp and it pulls the uh, bottom yoke with it. But when you heat this up, one of the problems is, is that the, um, Oh, the heat is transferred from the bearing to the stem really quickly and that can make it difficult to you know shrink the two apart but it should work so and the other thing is as well is that a lot of these are covered in lacquers and that lacquer or it might be paint you might have a painted surface that lacquer the paint it might burn off this this is, looks like it's got lacquer on it so it'll probably burn off which you might not want from your steering stem obviously so we're going to go through one method the pros and cons and then the other method Right, so what we're going to do is we want to grab this so we can heat it up and I was about to go and get some glass, a fire blanket, but do you know what? I've got my TIG finger. So the TIG, fi the TIG finger is perfect. 
because it's literally the right size allows us to grab the shaft pretty tight We've got that what we then need like that one upside down because we want gravity to help us and we then need some grips to grab this just in case it doesn't go because it might be a bit of a knob so we'll get some grips Right then, so as I was, I left it to cool down because it wasn't coming, then I heard a pop. I was over there and I heard a pop and it's fallen. Oh, there we go, actually. I was, was going to say, oh, God damn it. I was like, I want to see how stuck, it isn't stuck. It obviously just got caught up. So there you go, it's come off. Um, and this is actually turned down to a smaller diameter than this. So it should just fall off. So this is a Koyo bearing race obviously we don't want that anymore and then this it's even pressed in that's crazy you can even see the bearing mark the bearing numbers have been transferred over let me pull you in master zoom you can see can you just see there look there's some there where my thumb is there's some bearing numbers it's hard to focus there we go there we go that's beautiful so you can see there, there's some bearing numbers that are literally pressed in. It could be just actually the crap. All of this is just, like I said, this is the lacquer that's burnt off. You'll notice that there's a there's a big area around it. This is where it got too hot and it's completely just literally turned to vapour. Um, but yeah, so that's how you'd get that off. But, like I said, the problem is, we look at the state of this now, right? We've heated it up, it's horrible etc 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 so what we want to do is we want to investigate the next method so with this bearing now on here now what we've got to do is we've got to get this off so we will get a dremel and we will cut it off we'll probably just grab that there lightly there we go and then what we're going to do is we're going to nip this with the Dremel's, Dremel's a bit better because it's a bit slower, well not slower, a bit smaller so we can get a bit of a tighter radius in there. Right then, now I've done that, it's time to actually get a chisel. <laughs> Like that. You see it? Mm-hmm. You see it? Do you want to come So what you can get is you can get yourself one of these, a, a, a chisel, that'll go in there nicely and bang. And what you're looking for is that it not to fit. You know what I mean? If it goes down in, then you're not really going to do much. These are um, hammers. At <laughs> This is not a hammer, Matt. Get it right. This is a screwdriver, but this has got a, a thing on the black, like a metal. And if you actually look at these, this is a, a, a 932A. These are actually meant to be smashed. I kid you not, this is a full set of them. This is a 932. Oh, they're all just the same thing. Oh, no, so this is a 018268. That's what the big one is. This is a 018266. And yeah, if you when you get these, you look at the boxes and stuff, they're literally allowed to smash them. So again, we look at how much of a spread we get in there. And this is too fat to fit in the hole and go down, which is what we want. Then, if we're going to hit this, 
we don't want to hit it as is in the vise because it'll just fall straight through. So what I want to do is want to remove it and try and stick it on something that's going to, you know, basically help support what we're about, the violent thing we're about to do. <coughs> in this case, I'm going to get a little block of steel under there just to shear it up. I'll move you. So in a sense, that's what we're looking at. And because this block, because this shaft is aluminium, I'm just going to put some underneath. It's just to support it, if you get what I mean. And then we can basically grab this and we can nail it. Actually, there is a smaller one a bit better. The smaller one's better. So then, that's it. It cracks. It's cracked the bearing. And that's it, that's all we needed, look, you see? And get in there and open that up. And it pops clean off. It's actually nipped it again, but you can literally just keyhole it like that and pull it off. 60% of the time, it works. Every time. So if you look, we've got, well, apart from all this dark patches and soot and stuff, these bits here, actually let me point them out, these bits here, these just rub out, that's just, that's in the soot, if you get what I mean, so that just rubs out, look. You can just mark, the, it's just the soot and crap. Where are we, are we there? But as you see, look, we've got no Dremel marks, no cuts, no nothing, just off she comes. And this, remember, this is the top. So there's no marks, no nothing, and we just split this get a crack, it's split all the way through. Number one, the Dremel version is, this, this, this cutting it like this is easier. You see how close I got? You don't have to go all the way back down to the, you, know, you don't have to go all the way to the inside. Just through about, I'd say about, try and get about 50% through it. But you can see there, we've cut through it the best we could. No marks on this pattern, like I say, all the charring and stuff. But you see the difference is this one takes a long time, depending on if you've got a steel steering stem or an aluminium one like this, that can change the whole procedure and it can make it difficult or not difficult. But if we just Dremel it and just get a tap, it's a lot quicker, it's a lot more precise, and then we're job done. So, that's that. Um, so I hope you can, oh, let me pull out. <laughs> let me pull out. So I hope that, kind of gives you the pros and cons for what you might want to do. So with the Dremel, you need like a Dremel or an angle grinder, although the small wheel radius does help. Um, and then you just need something like a chisel or something just to give it a bash. And I use the smaller of the two screwdrivers. That was the easier one. Um, and it's just one little tap and that's it. It just cracks and that's it. She's gone. It's great. Um, so there's that. Or... You can heat it, but again, that depends on what your finish is, because as you can see, this is all charred. This will all blast out. This will all blast out spot on. This won't, you know, this this isn't staying like this. You just blast off the lacquer. But um, yeah, I hope that gives you an insight into what might work best for you. Because the thing is, it's it's a lot cheaper, and a lot more people probably have blow torches than one or two. I won't say especially so, but surely a chisel and a hammer and a Dremel are kind of in the realms of what you can use. What you don't need to do is you don't need to get, funnily enough, you don't need to get a chisel in here and bray the living life out of it. Because the other thing is as well is that if you miss and go all the way through, you could strike a stop and break it off. So not only have you knackered this surface and not only have you you've been at it, which it shouldn't have been, but you've also broke your, your, your I can't remember which tree this is, but it's one of the trees. <laughs> All that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.